Here I've got a nice viewer suggested integral that I really like. So let's look at it. We have one over pi squared times the integral from zero to infinity of natural log of x squared over the square root of x times one minus x squared. And I wanna point out the fact that we've got this one over pi squared here really hints that we'll be looking at something like the sum of the reciprocals of the squares near the end of this problem because it's well known that the sum of the reciprocal of the squares is equal to pi squared over six so I, that that's just a hint that I feel like we'll see if we really get there Okay, so along the way, we're going to need the following lemma, and that says for a bigger than negative 1, the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the a natural log of x squared dx is 2 over a plus 1 cubed. Okay, so let's get to proving this lemma first. So I'll do this with integration by parts. The big hint that we should use integration by parts is the fact that we've got an inverse function here. So that's a standard setup for integration by parts. So let's say this, all of this right here is u, so the natural log of x squared, and then this x to the a dx is dv. So let's see how that builds out our integral. So that means du is two times the natural log of x over x. Again, we had to use the chain rule there. Might as well put a dx here as well. And then v using the power rule. We know that we can use the power rule because a is bigger than negative one. We'll get that this is one over a plus one x to the a plus one. Now I want to point out that this is already shake, shaking up to look like what we've got over here. We have this 2 and then we have this a plus 1. Okay, so let's put this into our integration by parts formula and see what we get. So this will be equal to u times v. So that's going to be 1 over a plus 1 times x to the a plus 1 times the natural log of x quantity squared. We need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So that actually requires taking a limit at the lower bound. But I think with L'Hopital's rule, it's pretty easy to see that this entire thing cancels out to 0. I'll let you guys check that. This problem would be way too long if we checked all of the little details like that. Okay, now we have minus v du. So that's gonna be minus this times this. So let's see, that's gonna give us minus two, the integral from zero to one. Notice our x to the a plus one will cancel with this x in the denominator, just leaving with us with x to the a times natural log of x dx. And I gotta put my a plus one out here. But notice I'm set up for integration by parts again because I've got essentially the same setup. I've just reduced the power on my natural log by one. So let's do the same sort of thing. We'll let this equal u and we'll let this equal dv. So u is equal to natural log of x and yellow dv is x to the a dx. Well now notice that yellow v and orange v are gonna be the same. Let's see what yellow du is. Taking the derivative of natural log, we get one over x dx. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So now we'll have minus two over a plus one. That's the constant that we have out front. And then we'll have u times v. So that's gonna be one over a plus one times x to the a plus one times the natural log of x. We need to evaluate that from x equals zero up to x equals one. But as we discussed before, that's gonna involve a limit and that'll also tend towards zero. So this cancels out. And that just leaves us with the integral of v du. So that's gonna be minus one over a plus one times the integral from zero to one of x to the a dx. That's what we're left with. So let's maybe put everything together. We have this minus two over a plus one times minus one over a plus one. That gives us two over a plus one quantity squared. We've got the integral from zero to one of x to the a dx. But we can finish this off with the power rule pretty easily, and that will leave us with two over a plus one quantity cubed.
Okay, so we have established our tool. Now we're ready to work on our main result. So let's look at it again. We've got one over pi squared times the integral from zero to infinity, natural log of x squared over root x times one minus x squared. So I started off with our first, or maybe the zeroth step because it's so small, and that is to break up this interval from zero to infinity into the interval from zero to one and then one to infinity. And from here, I'm gonna perform a substitution on the second integral. And that substitution will be x equals one over y. Now, what's the motivation for that substitution? Well, let's notice that if x is going to one, then y is going to one, and if x is going to infinity, then y is going to zero. So that's gonna transform this integral, or the bounds of in this integral, to have zero, one as the bounds, just like our first one. Okay, so let's see what the dx component is. That will be equal to minus one over y squared times dy. Okay, so now let's put all of those parts into this second integral. So we'll have the integral from, it'll be one to zero, and then the natural log of one over y squared over the square root of one over y, one minus one over y quantity squared, and then dy over y squared, and we need a minus sign out front from this minus sign right here. Okay, so now let's see all the simplification that can be done, and there's quite a bit. So maybe some of the simplest are that the natural log of one over y is the same thing as the nat negative of the natural log of y, but we're squaring it. So that means that minus sign will go away and we just have that's the natural log of y. Now furthermore, I can take this square root of one over y and move it up into the numerator. Here I'll have just the square root of y here. Then I can take this minus sign, turn it into a plus by changing the order of the bounds of integration like that. Okay, let's see what else can be done. I can take this y squared and then multiply it in here. So that's gonna cancel this down to just the number one. And then this term right here will be y. But now y minus one squared is the same thing as one minus y squared. So we may as well write this as one minus y quantity squared just to make it look more like our original integral. Okay, so let's see what we've got. After all of that substitution, we have changed this to the integral from zero to one of the square root of y times the natural log of y squared all over one minus y squared, and then let's see, dy, like that. Okay, nice. But I can do a simple change of variables which doesn't do anything, just replace y back to x and now I can combine these integrals together. So let's see what we get if we do that. We'll have one over pi squared times the integral from zero to one of, let's see, natural log of x quantity squared over one minus x quantity squared, and then we'll have one over the square root of x plus the square root of x dx, like that. And so that's from this one over square root of x here, and then this square root of x that we get from that after switching x back with y. And now maybe I wanna reorder this a little bit, just so that I can start thinking about how to expand it as a series. So this is gonna be one over pi squared, and then we'll have the integral from zero to one of natural log of x quantity squared times one over the square root of x plus the square root of x times the derivative of one over one minus x dx. So what have I done here? I took this one over one minus x quantity squared and I've replaced it with the derivative of one over one minus x. That might seem like unnecessarily complicated, but this is just a nice geometric series. So let's see, this is gonna expand into the derivative of 
the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of x to the n. But we can just do term by term differentiation on that and get the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of n times x to the n minus 1. So just to reiterate, all of this stuff which I have over here in blue can be replaced with this blue boxed series over here. Okay, so let's make that replacement at the top of the next board. So I've rewritten it just a tiny bit, but on the last board we ended with the following version of our goal integral. So I've got this essentially 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x times the sum, which we discussed before, and then we've got our natural log squared, which I put over there on the right. Now I want to take this sum and distribute it through to both of these terms right here. Let's see what that will leave us with. Now we'll have 1 over pi squared, and then the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of n times x to the n minus 3 halves times the natural log of x quantity squared. So let's see, that comes from moving this natural log of x quantity squared through and then using power rules to combine those two exponents. Okay, great. Now maybe I'll make a big parenthesis here and then I'll write another an integral, integral and sum for the second term. So I'll put a dx and then we'll have plus the integral from 0 to 1 of my sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of n times x to the n minus half in this case. Again, because how the power rule works and then natural log of x quantity squared dx. Now my next step will be to take out the n equals one term here. Notice that the n equals one term is x to the minus half times natural log of x squared and then re-index the next terms. So I'll replace n with n plus one. So we'll have plus the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of n plus one times x to the n minus half times the natural log of x squared. So just to reiterate, the orange we get from the n equals one term and the yellow we get from all of the rest of the terms after our re-indexing. But now notice that this n equals minus half term is the same as this n equals minus half term. They just have slightly different coefficients, but needless to say, we can combine them together pretty nicely. So let's do that. We'll have this is 1 over pi squared, and then we'll have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the minus half times natural log of x squared dx. That's from this n equals one term. And then plus this sum as n goes from one up to infinity of two n plus one times x to the, I'm gonna write this as two n minus one over two times natural log of x quantity squared dx. So that's com from combining this n plus one with that n and then just rewriting the exponent a little bit. Okay, now next up, we can start using our lemma over here. So notice this term will be with a equals minus half, and all of these terms will be with a equals two n minus one over two. So that's gonna leave us with one over pi squared. Well, I'll let you guys check out if you plug in a equals minus half into this, that you will in fact get 16. That's actually pretty easy to see. We've got minus half plus one, that's half cubit, that's an eight in the denominator, move it up to the top and that gives us 16. And then for the rest of this, we have plus this sum as n goes from one up to infinity of two n plus one times 16 over two n plus one quantity cubed. So notice this 2n plus 1 quantity cubed is coming from this 2n minus 1 plus 1, but then the 16 on the top comes from essentially the same reason as this did over here, just with some simplification. Okay, but now I want to notice that I can re-index this 
by sending n to n minus 1 and then have this be my new n equals 1 term. Because notice if I send n to n minus 1 there, I will start at n equals 2. But then I can smash those together. Oh, while I'm at it, I should also cancel this with this down to a square. So let's see what we've got now. We've got 16 over pi squared. I can bring that out of my parentheses. And then the sum, as n goes from 1 up to infinity, of 1 over 2n minus 1 quantity squared. So that minus 1 comes from the re-indexing. So look, I've got the sum of the reciprocals of all of the odd natural numbers. Okay, so let's maybe bring that up and then we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we left our goal integral as 16 over pi squared times the sum of the reciprocal of all of the odd numbers. Notice if n equals 1, we get 1 there, n equals 2, we get 3 there, so we've got 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared, so on and so forth. Now, I'll take this, this is the sum of the reciprocal of all the odd numbers, and write it as the sum of the reciprocals of all the numbers minus the sum of the reciprocal of the even numbers. That's because all numbers are either even or odd. So that's going to leave me with 16 over pi squared times my sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of 1 over n squared minus my sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n quantity squared. So like I said, these are all the numbers, all the even numbers, but I'm taking their difference, which is just going to leave all the odd numbers. Now I can bring this 2 out front and I've got a quarter. And that's actually extremely helpful because now I've got one of these minus one quarter of these, which leaves us with three quarters of those. So I've got 16 over pi squared times three over four times the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. But now that's a super famous sum. That's the so-called Basel problem. I think I did a video on it that I thought was pretty good. Check that out if you want to. But it has a famous value of pi squared over six. So in the end, we have this is 16 over pi squared times three over four times pi squared over six. And now we can start simplifying. So notice that this four We'll cancel this 16 down into a 4, but maybe I'll write that as a 2 times 2. Now I can take one of those 2's, combine it with the 3, and cancel out the 6. So that and that will cancel. And then finally, maybe the most obvious cancellation is this pi squared. So let's look. Everything canceled except for that 2 in the numerator. So that means our final answer is 2. And that's a good place to stop.